Hello dear students, this is Supply Chain Management and Logistics course tutorial. The topic I am going to discuss is Intermodal Transportation, Containerization and Unitization. The learning objectives are to understand intermodal transportation, then to learn about containerization and to learn about unitization. Well, intermodal transportation, also called multimodal transportation, so this is combining, combining two or more modes to take advantage of the inherent economies of each mode and it does provide an integrated service at lower total cost. It is the use of more than one mode of transportation to move a shipment to its destination. The two most common intermodal transportation are piggybacking and container ships. Now let's discuss about piggybacking. Piggyback transportation means transportation of goods where one transportation unit is carried on the back of something else. Something else, it means some other mode of transportation. In rail transportation, the practice of carrying trailers and semi-trailers in a train atop a flat car is called piggybacking. The best known and most widely used intermodal system is the trailer on a flat car or container on a flat car, which is in short TOFC, that is trailer on a flat car and container on a flat car, in short, that is COFC. Now, what is a container? Containers are the boxes utilized for intermodal product storage and movement between motor freight, railroads, and water transportation. The containers are typically 8 feet wide, 8 feet high, and 20 to 40 feet long and do not have wheels. On the other hand, trailers are, though these are similar height and width, but it can be as long as 53 feet and it has highway wheels. Now here you see in the picture, this is called piggybacking. Now you see in the picture that trucks with load, these are carried by a flat car of a train. Now these are containers in a, a shipping port. Then this is a trailer, you notice the trailer, this is almost like the container but there are wheels in this. Now this picture is showing a truck pulling a semi-trailer. A trailer or container is placed on a railroad flat car for some portion of the intercity line haul and pulled by a truck at origin and destination. Though the trailer on a flat car concept facilitated direct transfer between rail and motor carries, it also presents several technical limitations. The placement of a trailer with highway wheels attached transferred to a rail car can lead to wind resistance damage and weight problems whereas the use of container reduces these potential problems that is wind resistance damage and weight problems these are comparatively reduced in case of container uh, because in the case of container containers can be double stacked and these are easily transferred to water carriers however containers Require special equipment for over the road delivery or pickup. But in case of trailer, you already learned that trailers have wheel and therefore uh, there is no need of such equipments as it is required in case of container. Road based container operations need a fleet of trucks that can carry containers 
is in 20 TEU that is 20 foot equivalent unit or 40 TEU sizes and these are standard ones. The major operation problem in case of container is to plan the return flow of containers because if that come empty then it again increase cost for the farm. Now here you see the various types of containers in use. A standard container now this standard containers are those which are designed to carry a wide variety of general cargo. They are often labeled as dry containers because they carry dry goods. There are tank containers which are designed to carry liquids. Those may be chemicals or food stuff. Then there are open top containers. So it's a container with an open roof. It means there is no roof and designed to carry cargo that is too large to be loaded through standard container doors such as machinery. Now in that case the product or the goods that is the machinery that need to be put from the top and it can be covered with some materials like tarpaulin. Then flat container. These are with open roof. And sites designed to carry heavy and oversized cargo. The cargo transported is left exposed to outdoor conditions in case of flat container. Now you know there are some products or some commodities like where you know the length may be very uh, very large and in that case it is not possible to carry within an enclosure or within a uh, the four walls of the container so in that case the flat container comes to help then there are refrigerated container which are also known as reefer and these are designed to carry temperature control cargo now another method of your uh, intermodal transportation is container ships Fishy back, train ship and container ships are example of the oldest form of intermodal transport. Now container ships are those ships which are space, specially built for carrying containers and they utilize waterways which are one of the least expensive modes for line haul movement. The fishy back, train ship and container ship concept loads a truck trailer, rail car or container onto a burst or ship for the line haul mob. Such services are provided in coastal waters and inland navigable waterways. Now here you see a container ship. The ship is full of a number of containers. Now an associated term with intermodal transportation is containerization. Till now, we are repetitively using the word container, container. So, what is this? This is nothing but this is the much use of containers. Containerization refers to the increasing and generalized use of the container as a support for the freight transportation. It involves processes where the intermodal container is increasingly used. The development of intermodal transportation and containerization are mutually inclusive. This technology of containerization now standardized in design, especially in dimensions of containers, and it has made it possible for safe carries of goods across various modes. Say land so roads or rails then water inland coastal or ocean going and even air and then also in a seamless manner and because of mechanized handling system of containers a number of benefits such as reduction in handling charges reduction in time of loading and unloading then reduction in packaging charges and these benefits are derived from containerization so this is nothing but use of 
containers for intermodal transportation support. Now, another related concept of intermodal transportation and containerization is unitization. Unitization is the process of grouping master cartons into one physical unit for materials handling or transportation. The concept of containerization includes all form of unitization, from tapping two master cartons together to the use of specialized transportation equipment. And all types of containerization have the basic objective of increasing handling and transport efficiency. Now let's see the benefits of unitization. Unit loads provide many benefits over handling individual master cartons. First, unloading time and congestion at destination are minimized. Second, product shift in unit load quantities facilitates material handling. Unit loads utilize approximately one-fifth the time required for manual loading or unloading. Then inbound shipment verification is also simplified as more unitized inbound shipments are barcoded. Inventory can be positioned rapidly for order selection. Finally, in-transit damage is reduced by unit load shipping and specialized transportation equipment. And all these factors together reduce logistical cost. So these are the benefits of unitization. Now there are two methods of unitization. One is use of rigid containers for unitization and another is use of flexible containers for unitization. Now let's see what is rigid containers. Rigid containers provide a device within which master cartons or loose products are unitized. The premise is that placing merchandise within a container will both protect it and facilitate handling. The airlines use rigid containerization both for freight and for passenger baggage. The containers which are designed to fit in the cargo area of aircraft facilitate loading and unloading while reducing product damage and pilferage. So the benefits of rigid containerization are it improves overall material movement efficiency, it reduces damage in handling and transit, it reduces pilferage, then it reduces protective packaging requirements, it provides greater protection from elements of environment, and it provides a shipment unit that can be reused a substantial number of times and thereby reducing waste and the need to dispose of the container. Now let's say flexible containers. Flexible containers do not protect a product by complete enclosure unlike rigid containers. The most common type of non-rigid containerization is stacked master cartons on pallets or slip sheets. So I'm going to discuss what is a pallet or slip sheet. A slip sheet which is similar to a pallet in size and purpose is generally made of corrugated cardboard or plastic film. Because the slip sheet lays flat on the floor, special lift trucks are required to handle shipment unit loads. The primary advantage of slip sheets is cost. Slip sheets permit one-way utilization and are insignificant from a weight and fuel perspective. Flexible containers are typically used to provide the foundation for unit loads. The size should be determined based upon load, compatibility with the handling and transport equipment used throughout the logistical system. There are different approaches to tie master cartons on slip seats and pallets. And the most common are block, brick, row, and pinwheel. The block method is used with cartons of equal width and length. With differential widths and length, the brick, row, or pinwheel pattern is employed. 
Except for a block method, cartons are placed in the unit load arranged in an interlocking pattern with adjoining tires placed at 90 degree angles to each other. Load stability is enhanced with interlocking. The use of flexible unitization can increase damage potential if it is not properly restrained during handling or transportation. And in most situations, the stability of staking is insufficient to secure a unit load. And there are standard methods for improving stability, which include rope tie, corner post, steel strapping, tapping, and anti-skid treatment, brake away adhesive, and wrapping. These methods essentially tie the master cartons to the pallet. And for securing the unit loads, shrink wrap and straps wrap are used. Now here you see some uh, photographs of pallet, different types of pallet. Now this is an example of flexible container. This is not exactly a container because it has no enclosure but uh, here you see the pallets provides the foundation and over it the containers or whatever the goods the cargo is there that will be loaded or that will be stacked and after that it will be tied uh, there are various methods as we have already discussed uh, now this is photograph of a galvanized steel pallet this is a wooden pallet this is a plastic pallet and this is a metal pallet. Now here you see in the picture, in this pallet, in this metal pallets, the uh, timbers or the woods are, these are stacked. And uh, here you can find out the reason why the flexible containers or the pallets are used. Now since the sizes or the length are not that much uniform and since um, there is a variation and therefore this open type of containers or the flexible containers are used. Well, the information that I have presented in the slides, uh, I have collected it from these sources. So for further reading, you can visit these sources. So with this, I am concluding this tutorial. Thank you.